has really got a lot of people messed up. I'm telling you, a lot of women, this is not, it's just not fair until you start waking it in her. Okay? So you've got to learn to be a lover to the girl. Learn how to awaken the desire that is in her. Which leads me to the next point, which she needs foreplay. Now you're preaching, brother. <laughs> and, and let me say this to you. You know, a lot of guys' way of, of initiating sex is they'll ask their wife, uh, you want to have sex? <laughs> and the answer, more often than not, is no. Why would you ask a question that's most likely to be responded with a no? I never ask my wife if she wants to have sex. Never. I just go for it. <laughs> because I am the initiator. You may not feel like it now, but you will when I'm finished. of romance and foreplay is you want to have sex? <laughs> There's something wrong with you. Come on. Rise up. Take your place. Now check this out. Song of Solomon. <laughs> I love this. He writes, your stature is like that of the palm tree and your breasts are like clusters of fruit. <laughs> I said to myself, I will climb the palm tree. <laughs> now take hold of the fruit. <laughs> ha -ha! Hallelujah. <laughs> now the problem here is most guys don't want to take the time to climb the palm tree. They just want to hop in a cherry picker and swing in and grab the coconuts. Hey, baby, come on. <laughs> you want to have sex? <laughs> you wake? Come on. Stop that. You've got to learn how to climb the palm tree. You've got to learn how to touch the girl. How to romance the girl. And you need to be romantic. You got to mix it up. You got don't be so puke and predictable. A lot of you guys, the minute you touch her, she knows what's coming. <laughs> Why does she act like that? Because you're so obvious. You're so predictable. Women are not interested in a formula. Men are by nature formulaic. You do this, you do that, you get that. You do this, you do that, you get that. All right. And she's nice. You know, you do that every time with her. She just, get away from me. You need to mix it up. Got to learn how to climb the palm a tree. <laughs> you know, you don't, you know, you really want great foreplay? Turn it into a 24-hour deal. I call it slow roasting your woman. <laughs> Don't be in such a hurry. You know, kiss the girl, leave her alone. Flirt with the girl, leave her alone. Touch the girl, leave her alone. <laughs> Keep her guessing. What, what's going on? What is this? You know, you know. My wife will come out of the shower and say, hey, baby, just lay down. I'll, I'll give her a back rub. She'll fall asleep. Now, cover up. I'll just crawl into bed next to her, turn off the light and go to sleep. So, Couldn't do that, Pastor. I go blind. <laughs> You've got to learn how to climb at a palm tree. Take it a time. Don't worry about this desire thing. You see, you know, I'm waiting for her to have all this desire on front. Stop. You're going to be a very old man before you have sex again. <laughs> all right. 
Number three, she needs time. Check this out. <laughs> he says, how beautiful you are, my darling. Your eyes behind your veil are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats. <laughs> Not my choice of words, but apparently 4,000 years ago, this was hot talk. <laughs> your lips are like a scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is a lovely. Your neck is like the Tower of David. Your two breasts are like twin two fawns, like twin fawns of a gazelle that browse among the lilies. <laughs> Check this out, he says. Until the dawn breaks and the shadows flee. In other words, all night long. <laughs> this dude had to be in his 20s, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> this Puerto Rican's way past all night long, I gotta tell you right now. But he's. All the night long. What's he going to do all night long? He says, I will go to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of incense. Where exactly is that, Pastor? <laughs> Let me explain it to you. If you look in the back of your Bible where they have all those nice maps of the Holy Land and stuff, you can look as hard as you want. You won't find myrrh mountain anywhere. <laughs> so, well, where is it? And I'll think it through. Talks about her hair, and her eyes, and her nose, and her lips, and her neck, and her breasts. Ends up at Myrrh Mountain. Where do you think it is? <laughs> That's in the Bible? Yes, it is. And the wild thing is he's there all night long. Which brings me to a very delicate subject. And for the love of God, don't raise your hands <laughs> or point out anyone. <laughs> but this is a problem for a lot of guys. I was watching this TV show once. My, my wife was in the hospital, and I was in the hospital with her, and we're just kind of killing time watching TV and flipping through the channels and all these daytime shows and different chick shows, talk shows. And we hit this one, and the lady says, Today we're going to be discussing why women have a difficult time achieving orgasm. I said, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so, so I said, let's watch this one. I like this one. So they have these women and they have these psychologists and these doctors and they're all, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us, you know, women? What's wrong with us? We stink, we stink, we stink. And then they would go to the commercials and they would do these teasers where you, they would ask a question and then give potential answers and then you had to wait till after the commercial to get the answer, right? It's a teaser, make you stick around. Well, about halfway through the show, they asked this one question. What is the average length of a man's sexual experience? A, two minutes. B, 10 minutes. C, 20 minutes. And it went to commercial. I looked at Debbie and I said, you know what the answer is? She goes, no, what? I said, two minutes. She goes, oh, it is not. I said, you watch. Came back and bing, hey, two minutes. And then they went on. What's wrong with us? How can we have a hard time achieving orgasm? <laughs> Hello, did you see the screen? <laughs> now do the math. If a woman needs anywhere from seven to 14 minutes and a boy's done in two minutes, <laughs> you got yourself a math problem. <laughs> The worst part of it is, <laughs> two minutes is the average. <laughs> now guys, you can do better than the two minute drill. 
There's all kinds of things you can do. There's all kinds of books. There's all kinds of helps. There's exercises you can do. And I, I don't like exercising, but this stuff I can do. You know, that where you can get past this two-minute drill problem. Now, ladies, you have to understand the number one element to enable a man to beat the two-minute drill is regular, consistent sex. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you make a guy wait for two weeks. And he ain't going to last 30 seconds for crying out loud. <laughs> All right, you need to help this boy become a lover to you. You got to help him get his stamina up, all right? But you got to be focused on the girl. Now, if all you are is focused on yourself, a lot of guys, that's two minutes is more than enough time. There's, you know, there's, it's all about them. Oh, get my release. Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> and then they wonder why she doesn't want to have sex later. Well, it's a drag for her. I know women who've been married their entire married lives who've never had an orgasm. Never. But who'd been married before and knew what an orgasm was. They knew what I was talking about. Coming to my office, I don't know. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Does he ever ring your bell? No. So have you ever had your bell rung? Yeah. So she knew what I was talking about. Been married before. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. When he makes love to you, she goes, yeah. I said, two minutes or less. She goes, How'd you know? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. We can do better than the two-minute drill. All right? Number two. She needs privacy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he writes, let us go early to the vineyards. Secret place, private place, to see if the vines have budded. <laughs> if their blossoms have opened, if the pomegranates are in bloom, people sure are in our gardening. <laughs> and there he says, I will give you my love. It's going to be very difficult for a woman to feel very sexual or turned on if she doesn't feel that her lovemaking to you is safe and private. All right? Which means chances are, if you have dinner guests waiting in the next room, she won't be very interested. <laughs> <laughs> to a lot of guys, we'd have no problem with that. Uh, make yourselves at home. There's Doritos in the cupboard. We'll be with you in a little bit. About two minutes, I'd say. She's not going to be interested in that, you nitwit. That's why for a lot of women, just having children makes it difficult for them to feel very sexual. I call children the anti-sex. Because <laughs> yeah, they're always around. They're always around. It's always around. And it's hard for them to feel very sexual. you got to work with her on that. And ladies, you know, there's locks on your doors. Use them. You know? You can't just neglect the sexual needs of your husband until they're 18. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. They'll be gone eventually. <laughs> Everything changes with children. You know, you're not the same anymore. Women, you guys have to understand that physically they're different, emotionally they're different. Everything's changed. Those beautiful, seductive breasts are suddenly transformed from erogenous zones into public utilities. <laughs> and guys, she's being touched all day long. And then you come home. <laughs> hey, baby. Touch me and die. <laughs> you 
Now you hang a couple of monkeys from your testicles all day long. See how you feel at the end of the day. I'm good. I'm good, thanks. I'm okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks for asking, I'm good, I'm good. She's not the same, but girls, he is. Ain't nothing happened to him. He's still the same wild man you married. And a lot of couples, they really mess up at this point in their marriages. That's why a lot of marriages only make it to about the five to seven year mark. Just long enough for the regrets to come in, upset the, the apple cart, and you fail to make the proper adjustments. And it destroys the relationship. Ladies, you cannot get so engrossed in being mommies that you forget about the sexual needs of your husband. So, but Johnny needs me. Johnny needs me. I'll tell you what Johnny needs. He needs a father. And if you keep it up, he's not going to have one. It's not worth it. And girls, you have to be really careful about rejecting your husband sexually. I don't know if you're aware of this, but for most men, as few as three or four rejections in a row, and he'll begin to shut down sexually. If you have a husband who argues with you about sex, consider yourself blessed by God. Because at least you keep it on the front table. But a lot of guys, they just shut down. They, I've had, I have women in conferences like this who come up to me, tears running down their faces, saying, I did that to my husband, now he won't touch me. It's not worth it. Why do you think all the jokes on TV are about the young, sexually frustrated man, but the older, sexually frustrated woman? Because she comes back to life, see? You're going to come back to where you were, but now... He won't care about you anymore. He won't feel safe to be the initiator anymore. And it's going to, and you say, well, what do we do? Everything, you know, it, it rarely ever goes back to the way it was. You might have to turn into the initiator. I mean, that, it's not worth it. You younger ones, watch yourselves during this time. I understand you're tired. And guys, get a clue. The girl is exhausted. Give her a break. Let her rest. They just did a survey on USA Today weekend, this weekend, I don't know if you saw it, but they said what were men's number one interests, it was uh, um, sex, uh, food, and sleep. And they surveyed women, and their top three interests were sleep, food, and sex. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're being traded in for a cheeseburger, Jack, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Help the girl. Let her rest. Give her a break. You want her to be a lover to you? Let her take a nap. You take the little rugrats for a while. Let them peel your brain apart. <laughs> all right? And all of this now leads us to the number one key to incredible sex which I will give to you right after this break. Yeah.